The main proof that Islam is true is the Qur'an itself. It is held up as an unsurpassable miracle of eloquence and beauty. The Qur'an says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 23, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And if you are in doubt about that which we have revealed to our servant, then bring a surah like it, and call your witnesses other than Allah if you are truthful. However, the problem with this challenge is that it cannot be carried out objectively. It's a bit like saying, My wife is the most beautiful woman in the world. Show me another one like her if you are truthful. Muslim opinion is, of course, that the Qur'an is sublimely eloquent, beautiful in style and content. And I used to think that too when I looked at the Qur'an through the perspective of faith. I found it beautiful and moving. But when I lost my faith, my magic spectacles fell off and I began to wonder what it was that I ever saw that was so miraculous about this book. Yes, some parts are quite moving and beautiful, but other parts are distinctly dull and clumsy, and still other parts make me cringe and squirm. They are so violent and cruel. Nothing sublimely beautiful there. The Qur'an is in fact full of anomalies, that if they were found in any other book they would be seen as mistakes. But of course Muslims cannot entertain the idea that God would make mistakes. So they are turned on their head and seen as evidence of the Qur'an's unique beauty. Arabic grammar was built on the Qur'an, and every anomaly has been explained away in one way or another. Take one small example of verse 69 in Surah Al-Ma'idah. I'll just read the verse to you, which goes like this. Inna ladina amanu, wal ladina hadu, was sabi'una, wal nasara, man amana billahi wal yawm al-akhir, wa amala salihan, um, indeed, those who uh, believe, those who are Jews and Sabians and Christians, and whoever believes um, in God and in the last day and does good deeds, there will be no fear upon them and nor will they grieve. Now, the problem is with the word Sabi'un. Now, there are two other places in the Quran where this verse is, you know, where the wording is almost identical, it's pretty similar. Um, and it has Sabi'in. Now, Sabi'un is in the uh, nominative case, and Sabi'in is in the accusative case. In fact, it should be in, according to Arabic grammar, it should be in the uh, accusative case. It should be Sabi'in. So, Sabi'un looks like a mistake because you've got inna. You say, inna ladina amanu. So, inna is, is the particle that will make um, uh, sabi'un um, accusative. It should be accusative. Like you say, inna uh, al-walada. Uh, um, so, you, 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 um, you have to, it has to be accusative. It's a simple Arabic, it's a, anyone learning basic Arabic, Arabic should know that. So, why is this in the um, nominative and not in the accusative? Well, it has to be explained away, and especially since the other two verses, which are almost exactly the same, um, are, are in the uh, uh, accusative, then, you know, it, it has to be explained. The other two verses, by the way, are uh, verse 62 of Al-Baqarah and verse 17 of Hajj, if you want to look it up, and it says Sabi'in, not Sabi'un. So, Zamakhshari, of course, immediately being an expert in Arabic grammar, uh, in his tafsir, he immediately sees this and says, you know, well, there's something wrong here, hang on, I've got to explain this. So he says, وَالصَّابِئُونَ رَفْعٌ عَلَى الْإِبْتِدَاءِ وَخَبْرَهُ مَحْذُوفٌ So basically he's saying that um, the reason sabi'un is raf, the reason why it is in the nominative, is because عَلَى ibtida is because it's, 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 it's the... the Subject. It's starting a new sentence. It's it's a new sentence, and it's and it's, and it's the subject of that sentence. وَخَبْرُهُ and its predicate is mahduf, is elided, is omitted. And then he paraphrases what uh, the meaning is, and he says, um, so you have to understand it in this way. 
ان الذين امنوا والذين هادوا والنصارى حكمهم كذا والصابئون كذلك so he split the sentence into two it's completely arbitrary there's no reason why it should be done like that but he said okay you have to understand it like this that those who believe and those who are Jews and those who are Christians their uh, judgment is such and such and the sabi'un their judgment is likewise now why why you should you, you should split the sentence like that there's no reason for it there's no sense for it there's no justification for it apart from of course trying to correct this anomaly um, and it's it's quite clear that Zmachari is really struggling to find a way of explaining this um, but he is forced to do this because you know God doesn't make mistakes of course and these are the lengths that Muslims have to go to yet the Quran has many of these anomalies and the tafsirs like Zmachari are full of tenuous arguments and, 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 and twists and turns you know to make everything all fit as for eloquence Here's an example from Surah An Nahl, verse 106. Man kafara billahi min baad imanihi illa man ukriha wa kalbuhu mutma innun bil iman, walakin man sharaha bil kufri sadran, faalayhim ghadabun min Allahi wa adabun adim. Now, the, uh, the translation of that is that whosoever disbelieves in Allah after his belief, Save him who is forced to thereof, while his heart is still content with the faith. But whosoever finds ease in disbelief, on them is the wrath from Allah, and theirs will be an awful doom. Now, um, to me, in Arabic that sounds confusing, and in English it sounds confusing. Um, now, I know that I, I know a lot of Muslims will be saying, oh no, it's beautiful, it's, it's perfect, it's sublime and so on, um, and a lot of non-Muslims will be saying, oh no, we agree with you, Hassan, it's, uh, it's very confusing. But this just makes my point, you see, the whole thing is subjective, there's nothing undeniable about it. One person will see one thing, and one person will see another. I see a very badly structured verse, and somebody else uh, will, see, will see something different, because of their faith, or lack of it. I know some will say that many of the Arabs at the time were amazed by the Quran, and believed that you know, in it's because of that, because it was so miraculous, and, and they are the ones who should know best. But there were many Arabs who did not believe or swoon in admiration. So by the same token, they should also know best. It took a long and violent struggle to finally win over all the Arabs. And if it is a miracle that can only be properly appreciated by the Arabs at the time, or by those with a profound and expert knowledge in Arabic, then it's hardly a very good miracle, is it? since it's only accessible to a tiny minority of mankind. The rest have to take their word for it. There are other proofs which um, are often given, such as the so-called scientific miracles. Things like the development of the fetus, or the sending down of iron. But these things were either known about at the time, or the references to them are too ambiguous and depend on giving meanings to words that they never had. Again, if eternal hell is the result of rejecting these things, then they should be beyond even the slightest doubt. Since even the tiniest slither of doubt makes eternal torture in hell unjust, even for the most ardent believer. Then there are the miraculous signs that Allah has sent us. He's sort of passed us discreet little messages, written on an assortment of fruit and vegetables and sea creatures, the odd praying tree, or praying stone, a roadside woodland spelling out there is no God but God and Muhammad is his messenger. I mean, even when I was a Muslim, I, I, I thought this was absolute nonsense and I really pitied those who needed such absurdities to shore up their faith, basically. The truth is, there is no undeniable proof that Islam is true. Just like all religions, Islam depends on faith. There is no irrefutable evidence and there is no incontestable miracle. The only test that one should apply to any religion is to read what it teaches. <laughs>